Greetings gamers, my name is Anto and over the years I've made a bunch of videos about making your life as a dungeon master easier by building sessions and adventures quicker and with less stress. I've done videos where I've prepared an entire campaign premise in a single day or prepared an adventure within just one hour. So if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for a bunch more DM tips like this. But today I wanna to show you how I have built a template that lets me prep an adventure in as little as 15 minutes. So to do this, we're gonna be using a template I made. I will leave a link in the description to my drive through RPG store where you're gonna be able to get this template for free, as well as the links to all of the online generator resources that we're gonna use throughout the process process of this video. So here you can see my 15 minute generator. This is a single A4 side of paper. It's designed to get your creativity firing, get you ready to think about different ideas and get you to start the process of making an adventure as quickly as possible. I don't use this for every adventure and I don't always stick to the 15 minute time frame, but I do use it to get my creativity going and to follow a general path for the kinds of things that I want to include in most adventures. So this sheet is designed either to be printed out and written on by hand, or there is a form fillable version in the link in the description that you can use to do it in any PDF viewer. So at the top here we have our campaign name, our session date, the session number, and what players we expect to be present. And then immediately under that we have a generator. Now this is to just give us some ideas if you've got a session coming up and you have no idea what to do for that session, just roll 66 and use those resulting numbers to figure out what kind of adventure you're gonna run. This is great for one shots or pickup games, or if you have some people cancel and you need to run something outside of your main story, on game night, this is great for just throwing something together. So in the table, we have genre, action, adventure, horror, mystery or intrigue, crime or thriller, and then comedy. Then we have a key location. So is it set in a town or city, in the desert, a forest, in a frozen location, out at sea, or in the outer plains? Then we have the goal. What is it that the players are gonna be trying to do in this session? Are they stealing, saving, protecting, finding, exposing, or destroying? Then we have our MacGuffin. This is the thing that they're interacting with that drives the plot forward. So this could be a weapon, an artifact, a particular person, some information, a creature, or another location. Then we have our villain. These are just creature types from D&D 5e. So we've got beast, monstrosity, or aberration, fiend, celestial, or elemental, humanoid, or undead, construct, or ooze, fey, or plant, dragon, and giant. Then finally, we have the twist. This is where you're going to get a lot of narrative juice that may makes this feel like something that has been planned significantly longer than 15 minutes. So and then we have the betrayal. The PCs are betrayed by someone they know. We have the red herring. They get to the end of the adventure and things aren't quite as they seemed for the entire time they were adventuring through this session. Then we have the disaster. This is where something explodes either literally or metaphorically over the course of adventure and dramatically changes what the players expect. Then we have revelation. This might be revealing a secret that the players didn't know about. This could be finding a key piece of information that changes the context of everything they've known up until this point. Then we have Chekhov's gun. This is where you introduce something early on in the adventure and then give the players the chance to interact with it or have the gun go off in the final part of the adventure. So let's say the players are adventuring in an outer plane, let's say hell. They're adventuring in hell and early on in the session they see an awesome looking flying vehicle that's laden with weapons and things like that. Well, that would be a Chekhov's gun. By the end of the session, the players need to be flying that vehicle. Then we have the larger threat. This is where by the end of the adventure, the players realize that whatever it is they've been doing is only a small piece of a larger narrative. This could be that they defeat a boss only to find out that they're just a small cog in a larger machine. This could be they find the first piece of an incredible puzzle that leads them to the lost city of gold. Anything that allows this adventure to be the first part of a larger narrative. So to fill out this whole sheet, we start with rolling on this table, if that's what you wanna do, and then we put that in our session goal. If you're not rolling on the table, you'll probably have some kind of goal in mind for the session. So the players are gonna infiltrate the King's Keep to discover a piece of information. The session goal is to get them that information. So everything that you do all throughout the session needs to be in service of that goal. If you want the players to have the information by the end and they come up with a plan and that plan fails, you need to figure out 
how to get them around for the failure so that they can get to that information. Then we have our summary. This is where you'll just give a paragraph explaining what you think the, the A to Z of the adventure is going to be. So they start in the tavern and they meet the shadowy traveler who tells them about the treasure map. They journey to where the treasure map is located. They find an ancient tomb. They delve the tomb and they find the treasure. This gives you some broad ideas of your structure, which you then expand upon in the structure section. Here is where you'll say, here's what beat one is. Here's what scene one, scene two, scene three is. If you're running a five room dungeon, for example, which I've talked about up here, this is where you would plot out room one, two, three, four, and five. Then our people's box. This is where you're gonna make a note of all the important NPCs, enemies, anyone that your players can interact with during this session. So if you have them pick up a quest from a quest giver, they need to be listed here. If they have an enemy they need to overcome, they need to be listed here. Use this section to make some notes about these NPCs, some physical traits, some mannerisms, some important information that they might need to give to the players. Then we have a section for loot. So any important loot that the players are gonna find over the course of the adventure, if they are trying to find a particular artifact, make a note of the artifact maybe make some notes on what the artifact does then we have secrets so anything that the players don't know about but that you need to be aware of so that you can drop hints or start sowing seeds for future sessions you want to put in the secrets box and then at the bottom we have a box for just any notes that don't fit anywhere else and then we have the session notes this is to use at the table while you're running the adventure just to keep a track of what has happened so you can use all this information and build upon it after the session maybe expand on your notes use it to plan your next session that kind of if you're enjoying this video please do hit the like button down below it really helps out it pushes the video out into the youtube algorithm and really helps show it to a bunch of new people and expose more folks to the channel so i really appreciate it before i run through this and make a sample adventure just to show you how this looks in practice i want to tell you about a couple of the random generators that i use online to really speed this process up now the first of all is fantasy name generator if you've been around playing DD online for any period of time you've almost certainly heard of this site it has random generators for different kinds of names for almost anything that you can imagine and it's really useful for this rapid fire quick building of adventures to find location names npc names names for your villains names for the magical artifacts the players are trying to steal all that kind of stuff then when it comes to maps my go-to maps is dyson logos dyson logos makes incredible classic black and white style maps that you will have seen in all sorts of publications including proper wizards of the coast books now dyson logos has an entire commercial section on their website that allows you to use those maps completely freely so anytime i need a map for a session at the drop of a hat i go over to this page which will be linked in the description below and i just go search and say i need some kind of village well i'll just search for village and immediately we have a village map that I can use and put in front of the players and I don't have to think about where I need to go to look for these things. Now, of course, if you need a really specific map, this probably won't work, but if you need a really specific map, you're probably not planning something in 15 minutes or less. And then finally, we have Cobalt Fight Club. Cobalt Fight Club is a generator that allows you to build encounters really quickly. I use this just to get a rough ballpark of how many creatures of what challenge rating are going to be in my monster group. So over on the left here, you can choose the difficulty of your encounter, easy, medium, hard or deadly and then you can choose between random a boss on their own a boss with minions two monsters three monsters or a horde so you choose one of those options let's go with a trio of monsters you hit the refresh and it will give you three monsters whose xp totals the value that you need for what you set so let's say we're gonna have a hard encounter with three monsters so it'll give us a cr3 monster a cr2 monster and another cr2 monster I don't necessarily use the monsters it suggests. I just take the CR bracket that they're in and then go look for the appropriate monsters. So if we have used the random table on this planning sheet and we have gotten celestials, I'd go and look for a CR3 and two CR2 celestials to build up that encounter to make it a hard encounter for four level five players. This video is sponsored by the Side Quest Annual. This is my first big production book that takes the first 12 issues of my monthly magazine Side Quest, bundles them all together into a beautiful hardbound volume. It's about 190 pages 
worth of player and GM focused content. Late pledges are currently available until December 14th. So if you want to pick this up or you want to get the incredible special edition cover that looks, I'm so excited for this, head to the link down in the description below. But for now, back to the video. And then when you put all that together, in about 15 minutes, you can be left with this. This is something that I have just run through, going through that process to make an adventure. So at the top here, we've got City States of Ash, my current campaign. We've got our session date, what session number we are, and what players there would be present. And then I used a dice generator on Google to give me a set of dice. I came up with 22121, which gave us an action genre session in a desert where the goal is to steal a magical weapon or some kind of weapon from a fiend, celestial, or elemental. And the twist is a betrayal. So I decided to go with fiend for that. I mean, you can see here, an adventure theme session set in a desert where the heroes must steal a weapon from a fiend with a betrayal twist. The players are hired by a local half-orc trial to steal the sword Spite Blade from the demon Durnath who is camped in the desert fortress. On the way the PCs will have to deal with minor adventure encounters such as quicksand, poisonous snakes or sandstorms. When they arrive at Fort Horrig they'll have to infiltrate the location find the sword and escape with it. And if they get into a fight with Durnaf and win, Trial will use their weakened state to betray them and try and steal the sword for his master, Agrathon. All of the nouns in here, all of the proper names, pulled from fantasy name generator. So I got a couple names for demons. I got a half orc name. I got a name for a fortress and I got a name for a sword and put all of those in and it makes it feel like a much more planned out thing. And in our structure, we get the adventure, which they're gonna get from their half-orc friend. Trial hires the players to steal the sword from Durnath. Then they go travel, and I used Cobalt Fight Club to just pull up a couple of minor encounters suitable for level five players. Ignore the fact this is session 105, we're going with level five players. So that would be things like four giant vultures or scorpions or four death dogs, that kind of thing out in the desert, maybe some quicksand which we'd pull from the dungeon master's guide or a sandstorm then they find Durnath who is a babau is that how you is that how you say that demon name anyway it's a babau and he's got four dretch and two cackler demons with him again i use cobble fight club to generate my crs so it gave me a cr3 and then four cr one fourths and two cr one seconds halves our betrayal and our conclusion and then in people we've got durnath the demon that carries the magic sword the players are trying to steal trial who's the half orc will betray them and agrathon the rival demon who wants the sword for themselves in terms of loot we have spite blade the ravager of the damned which is a plus one sword and is held by durnath i figured out that was a plus one sword by looking at the tables in xanathar's guide that say when players should get access to different kinds of magic weapons then they'll get 500 gp one minor common item which is a first level scroll and one minor uncommon item which is a potion of greater healing again those xanathar's guide tables which tell you at what level the players should be getting access to what kinds of items invaluable for making these kind of quick loot tables and then in terms of secrets troll is half orc and they are secretly working for a grathon a rival demon who wants the sword for themselves then I jumped over to Dyson Logos, the commercial map list, searched for fort, grabbed one that I like the look of, which happens to be a drow spire fortress, and we're pretty much done. That is the bones of an adventure, and it took me about 14 and a half minutes to do that. Now, I'm not saying that this is fully fleshed out by any means. I have been running DD now for a number of years. I've run hundreds of adventures, so I am comfortable taking that skeleton and putting the meat onto the bones in an improvised way at the table. If you're not comfortable with that level of improv, that's completely okay. You can take this skeleton and expand on it with maybe 30 or 45 more minutes of work, say an hour in total, and you can build on all of those elements to give you something that you feel comfortable running. You can pick up this template down at the link in the description below. And if you are a dungeon master or a will builder, I have a template similar to this, but all for will building. It's called the Doppelganger system, and you can see a video on that right here. But until next time, happy gaming.